And you mentioned the vagus nerve. And so, you know, a, a term that I've heard a lot more in, in functional medicine and, uh, you know, something that I, I like to look at as well is vagal tone or the tone of, you know, basically the, the, the strength of what's happening and the effectiveness of what's happening through that vagus nerve. Can you explain that in more detail? Yeah, so the, the vagus nerve, again, is one of your par main uh, parasympathetic outputs. And you obviously have other parasympathetic nerves and other nerves that and other centers that control parasympathetic function. For example, in your sacral plexus, you have the parasympathetic function in the sacral plexus that innervate you know, your rectum and things like that. And then you also have um, other areas where your sympathetic chain ganglia these are a network of uh, nerves that are in your spinal cord from T1 to T10 that really fires your sympathetic fight or flight response. Um, and then in the in a cranial nerve section, you have other cranial nerves that may innervate the eye to promote tearing. You have other cranial nerves that innervate, you know, other places on your head and neck. But the the vagus nerve is one that really has one of the biggest connection between the brain and the rest of the body mm. is controlled by that vagus nerve. And we talked about the digestion and heart rate and other things, but the vagal tone is describing this, the strength, as you say, right? So vagus nerve kind of has that inhibitory effect on the body overall, mm. but it depends on what you're inhibiting, right? Yeah. So if you're inhibiting an inhibition, kind of like a negative and negative equals yeah. a positive. So if you inhibit something that inhibits, then you actually are activating something. So, so the vagus nerve, even though we say sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight is your gas pedal and a parasympathetic is your brake pedal, but really the, the vagus nerve is activating digestion, right? Yeah. So it's not inhibitory in that sense. So good vagal tone then will activate your digestive centers. Mm. And, and that includes not just motility that we talked about, also secretions, right? Yeah. Digestive secretion of gastric acid, pancreatic enzyme output, biliary contraction, bile release, all of that is vital to good digestive function in various different ways. And it can show up as symptoms in various different ways as well. For example, gastric stomach acid deficiency tend to manifest in a very specific set of symptoms that are kind of different from if you have pancreatic enzyme deficiencies, and also manifest a little bit differently than if you have biliary insufficiency. So by really understanding the, the signs and symptom of these things, you can actually just by symptom alone, be able to zero in pretty close to where the problem might be and therefore incorporate some natural medicine practices, either supplements, nutrient herbs, to really help restore some of these function. I would say the digestive system is one area where you know, natural medicine and functional medicine has a long history of providing a lot of help and, and tend to respond really well to things that we do. You know, for example, if you have low stomach acid, you can take apple cider vinegar yeah. or, you know, digestive bitters. If you have, you know, uh, enzyme deficiency, you can take, you know, digestive enzymes. So these are things that we've been taking to in functional medicine and natural medicine for a long time with great results. So digestion is one area where this stuff really helps. Yeah, and digestive bitters, one of the reasons why they work well for helping stimulate digestive juice flow is they actually activate the vagal, vagal tone, right? They actually activate vagus nerve function. Yeah, so bitters, you know, by, by the sensory pathway, when you taste things that are bitter, it's kind of a, it's got that vagus nerve stimulation. In fact, stuff that you do to your mouth have a vagus mm. nerve stimulatory effect. For example, a lot of the time we are, we advise our, clients to do vagus nerve stimulation exercise. Yeah. And these are typically things that we do with humming and gargling and gagging because we're, we're activating the general motor uh, efferent of the parasympathetic nerve function. So we're basically activating these muscles of swallowing, right? When you gag and hum and stuff like that, you're basically activating these throat muscles and therefore, when you activate it by a voluntary response, well, the gagging is not necessarily voluntary, but gargling is. And, yeah. and what you're doing is you're basically sending a signal to that, that uh, the, the nucleus, right? The, the vagal motor nucleus, where all these motor signal goes in. And when you fire that nucleus, then neighboring nucleus around that nucleus also gets fired. So then you have the vagal motor nucleus, but you also have other nucleus within that area where cranial nerve 10 goes to that fires down to the vagus nerve. 
So then that's how you can use these throat exercise to fire a neighboring center that drives some other function, which is the gut. That's why those things work. Yeah, it's really interesting, like strengthening a muscle and how that can actually benefit, you know, a lot of different movements. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. You know, we're trying to get improved neuromuscular uh, activation here, right? Where the vagus nerve is now, you know, the, the the muscular component now it's activating, for example, peristalsis in our gut. But also, like you mentioned, those secretions also are like a cross in a sense, you're getting you're getting both of those activations where it's helping improve the secretion component as well. So yeah, vagal tone is really key. What are some symptoms that you see with people that have low vagal tone? 